All right, I am at the Ballard, Ballard, <laughs> Ballard, Ballard Road, covered bridge. Uh, it's looks like it's dedicated to Charles F. Dean. Uh, built in 1883, which is funny because it seems like that seems to be the year that a lot of these covered bridges are being made, at least here in Ohio. Uh, and this one was restored in 2016. And the cool thing about this one is that it's like a nice, uh, almost kind of army green uh, look to it. So um, it looks slightly, not quite as long as the Stevenson or uh, Charlton Mill uh, covered bridges were, but um, still, it's a nice color. It's a nice change of pace, at least. Uh, the photograph a different colored one especially and like I said this was my first time visiting this one in particular and uh, yeah you can <laughs> excuse all the traffic because um, the highways this is probably gonna be the noisiest one which is in stark contrast to the previous one Charlton Mill which was much much quieter uh, but you know what that's okay so we'll make the most of what we got um, yeah, this one doesn't seem quite as long. Um, little to no graffiti, uh, fortunately. So, and I hope not, because it's a very beautiful one. And it was only restored a couple years ago uh, from now. And, yeah, I'm going to check out, the, there's some signage, just like the Stevenson Road one had, and some historical marker um, information, which would be nice. So, might as well share that with you here. Here we go, Ballard, Ballard Road Covered Bridge, uh, 1883, and it was uh, built by James E. Brown. And go ahead and pause the video if you like, and so you can read all that if you like. Feel free to. And here's another little sign for you. Very cool, very cool. It's cool how it shows you the original photo, and then the restored, uh, the present, current, look to it I guess. Pretty cool. And it came actually from this little country road here. So here it is. Um trying to think of what to do here. I parked all the way over here. There you go, you can see my car right there. <laughs> and uh I don't think it's really going to get in the shot because over there is kind of like just the parking area, I guess, for this, where it just basically is a big, like, cul-de-sac loop that you can loop around and go right through the bridge again. Um, so I just figured I'd park right there since it's there, obviously. I don't think it's really going to get in the shot. Um, the only other things are maybe the highway. There's some rails in the back there. Um, I'll have to time my shot well, which shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, let's say if a big semi comes by, I really don't want that in my shot. Um, and other than that, it's just a really bright, it's this, this bridge in particular is just out in the open. Um, seems like back and forth, each, each, every other bridge is either out in the open in bright sun and daylight, or it's in some kind of shaded area where, you know, both, both, both of those conditions are very difficult and tricky to uh, photograph in and to get a nice proper exposure. So, yeah, good thing I'm almost done with the, this uh, bridge tour today um, so this will be five out of six so I'm just gonna get to work on it and um, see really what the bridge I guess if I want to get all deep here it really speaks to me and really the right proper way to photograph it um, I think the first way to really start is just because this is an open straight road this is to do one dead on from this angle and vice versa I guess and uh, from there I can probably jump off maybe in the grass right here and then just kind of get some angled shots um, it actually crosses right over, looks like a creek over here, which is pretty neat. And, yeah. Should be a good one. So, we'll see what happens. Alright, so a few problems I'm noticing from this side and this angle uh, so far is that I can, I can focus easily on the, the sign like I have been. Uh, I guess that's my trademark style with focusing and auto-focusing with these bridges. But uh, there's this sign over here that's a distraction. There's just too many semis from uh, US 35 over here. And it's just creating a lot of noise and interrupting the creative process. Jeez. Anyways. Um, so I'm just going to try this out. And also it's backlit. Well, eh, more so side lit right there. But I mean, close enough. Um, but it's just a little bit tricky. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, I'm going to try out a shot here. Um, let me see what my settings are.
as we see the histogram it looks pretty nice because it laid out across the entire uh, the graph but then it starts clipping right on the right side which means it's a little under overexposed and um, but you know I want like I said I want to keep some of that shadow detail uh, well shadows <laughs> and then other parts uh, I still want some detail in that it, um, I don't want it to be just like a black blob of just nothing you know inside of the, the shadow area there inside the tunnel really uh, but I am going to take a shot here and we'll see how it looks let me adjust my polarizer ever so slightly and that polarizer helps because it, it reduces by a stop or two of light um, which on this bright sunny days you know I'd say is pretty essential honestly but all right I'm gonna take the shot here in a moment just want to make sure I get the um so this first one I'm going to expose for the like the uh, the tunnel and the interior. So there we go. As you can tell, obviously the whole entire sky has blown out, but obviously that's going to be quickly remedied because I'm going to bring it shutter speed way 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 up, and it's going to make this histogram that's at first glance going to look very unnatural. But like I said, I'm going to bracket everything, and it's going to it should have a nice from front to back everything exposed. So here we go. As you can see, it's very, very dark, but it does show the sliver of the blue sky. And as you can see, no blinks, which is what we're after. But, uh, so it seems like two is the magic number, though, with making these uh, shots today. I, I'll, I'll just expose once for the bridge, the interior bridge, and then another for the sky. And so far, it's been working pretty well overall. Um, can't wait to see how these all look. But still, that sign on that sign right there. I don't know. Distraction, because it's not even could be good or bad with composition but it's not even symmetrical where there's another obviously on that side whereas like these two at least it's symmetrical and obviously the bridge and the roof is but it's just kind of there on the side and since I'm composing with everything straight down the middle of the frame kind of makes it a little more eh, maybe it adds a little zest to the whole image I don't know it you know I guess you decide um, I may or may not crop it out so uh, I really don't know yet so I'm going to take a few shots here, um, just trying out different angles and um, like I said, my kind of thought process I guess, just do another straight on. Um, I doubt I'm going to do any interior abstracts. That Stevenson Road one looked really promising though. Uh, but the other bridges so far really haven't shown quite that style. But This is an interesting bridge in particular, it's uh, like pretty much all the other ones, the, the six in Greene County here, it's a How Trust one, um, which is cool because this sign actually tells you, or actually the green sign over here, tells you in detail what a how truss is, and I realize I haven't said it really what it is yet, so um, it basically says that it has diagonal members that are in compression iron thrust blocks attached to the upper and lower cords, and tension is carried by rods that run between the cords and run through the main floor beams. So, yeah. It's pretty interesting. Um, it's, it's neat because this one in particular is one of the only original standing ones. Um, and it's original location uh, for this county too, which is really neat. And it's also one of the first to pretty much pioneer the use of a steel structure as well, uh, which is really neat because before that they were using uh, wooden ones. And this one, you can clearly tell when you walk through it is that it has that steel structure to it. So yeah, <sighs> I've been talking a lot. It's but it, the more I learn about these bridges, it's it's pretty fascinating. And I do like a lot of Americana and older style history and especially local history in particular because um, I feel like Ohio is just rich in all this history um, like what's behind me here so anyways I'm gonna stop talking I'm gonna shut up now and um, photograph some more angles of this bridge and then we'll move on to the next one here all right so I think I finished on this side overall um, <laughs> I do kind of want to go down here uh, towards Caesar Creek and get closer on this side, but there is that white fence and there's the start of someone's, you know, gravelly driveway. And it says, be aware of dog, and uh, I'm not really looking to overstep my boundaries today and uh, mess around. And, uh, oh yeah, and I'll show you kind of the angle. I got my classic uh, vanishing point kind of, uh, what do you call it, you know, kind of right through the frame. <laughs> Don't ask what that was, but... Um, I got it towards down here on this, uh, on the left side from here, uh, near the Caesar Creek, and I got it photographing straight on. Um, obviously much, I'm closer than I was then, but yeah, I was kind of down there in the grass, 
and uh, yeah that worked out pretty well and so I kind of just went along the other side here um, I actually did take a couple of abstracts of uh, the steel structure because I thought after giving it like a second you know look or whatever I was definitely thinking like yeah it's it's, it's a little more different than the Stevenson Road uh, bridge was um, so I did take a few of you know steel roofing up there and everything so uh, yeah, this should turn out nice. Nice little abstractual patterns, textures. That's a big bulk of my work. Um, it's what I look for, at least, whenever I have the camera in hand. And so now I'm just on the other side here, or at least I'm walking up to my camera and tripod over here. And I did the same thing. I did a face, uh, kind of straight on uh, photograph of the, uh, the face of it, I guess you could say, or the tunnel. And uh, from there, I did my rooftop shot so I'm really nailing down this kind of workflow I mean it's I don't want to say it's becoming routine because I'm still enjoying it I mean there's only six bridges total that I'm doing today but still um, it's just been very very nice I think and so I think I may be done with this one um, could work another angle possibly down here I don't know yet uh, I may try that real quick and then I'll head on to the, the final bridge which is the angle mill covered bridge and that'll be the last one for this county uh my county and uh yeah we'll call it quits for the day so yeah it's been great so far though been really liking the results sixth and final cover bridge in my county um, that I'm seeking out today to photograph and document. So this is Angle Mill Covered Bridge and uh, obviously named for the road it's on, Angle Mill. Um, that seems to be a common theme with a lot of these places. Uh, but this one actually in particular is the longest one. Um, it spans about 135 feet total. So it's a very, very long, narrow corridor. Once again, it's another red covered bridge. But um, 
I really like how it looks overall. It's got a very simple design to it. It's a Smith truss uh, structure as the uh, signage and all the information at the very, very small parking lot on the other side uh, told me. So that's very handy to know, I guess. And so, um, yeah, the, the lighting is still very, very bright and sunny and harsh, as you can tell. But um, looking forward to photographing this one. As it says, it's built in 1877 and it says restored 2014 on the signs on the, the bridge itself. But then the signage down there says it was uh, restored in 2013. And then on bridgehunter.com, it said tentatively, so it must be an older thing, and it said tentatively it would be restored in 2012. So there's all these several dates thrown around. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I, I wish it was accurate, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, but, yeah, this is a very nice-looking bridge. Um, you could even potentially... I'm thinking about what to do. Um, so we got an old creek down here. I could potentially get on the bridge right here. I mean, it's a really quiet, as you can tell, country road. Pretty much no one's going to be around. And I might actually do that, or at least get over here so I can get a nice angled shot. Because this is such a big, massive one. It's like, I need to get farther away, I think. Um, I'm not too sure. But I even might do a straight on, like showing the vanishing point corridor, something like that. Actually, it might... Sorry, I'm visualizing in my head where the vanishing point. There's like a house barn thing there that might be a distraction, so I might try that idea, that aspect from this side, going that way, um, maybe. But I'm just gonna check it out a little bit more, um, see really what this might have to offer. Um, it smells bad. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I think I'm gonna get ready in a second to photograph it. And we will be on our way with this pretty long day of photographing these six bridges. Okay, so I crossed the street here, and I like the idea of it, because you can kind of tell from the video here, it frames it nicely, and it gets a nice finishing point. And I can encapsulate all of it into a single, you know, wide-angle frame, but it's just this one light pole with the surveillance sign, yet again, <laughs> on another covered bridge. So, um, I don't know if I'm really going to... Honestly, it's not even worth trying that. So I'm just gonna come back around here, around the rails, see what else I can come up with. Um, thinking, so far I've done some dead-on shots. I did some verticals. Um, that's about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just end up doing it on this side. I don't know. It's an idea at least. Yeah, let me see what I can do here. This might work. All right, so I think that's going to conclude um, my visit here, the Angle Mill Cover Bridge, and just the whole entire uh, kind of like mini project, honestly, and that just kind of lasted a day, at least in terms of uh, the uh, principal photography and the actual shooting of both photo and video. But um, yeah, this has been a very rewarding project. I've been really, this is just, it's been such a different thing. It's like been such a nice change of pace, a breath of fresh air uh, compared to what I'm normally used to, which is, you know, of course, uh, photographing macro stuff like wildflowers, uh, telephoto with birds, uh, wide-angle landscapes of anything, sunrises, sunsets, anything natural or in the environment. But um, yeah, this has been a nice change of pace, just doing something a little bit different here. And um, I, I think the results are going to turn out pretty well. And I hope you enjoy just the little adventure here and me uh, sharing uh, what goes in the photographing covered bridges. And I hope it might even inspire you to get out there and do it yourself. So. That'd be pretty nice. Um, if it does, let me know, I guess. Or if not, I just hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless and um, all the resulting photos that follow. 
Um, I just want to mention also real quickly, um, I know this video is probably going to be pretty long, but um, I'd like if you check out and listen to my podcast, uh, the All Outdoors Photography Podcast um, that I do with Henry Doyle and myself currently. And uh, we're open to any guests. If you're an outdoor photographer of any kind, um, we would love to have you on. Or even if you are willing to once a week record with us, you may even become a regular host with us. Or, you know, a guest or a host, it doesn't really matter. Or if you just want to listen, you know, we already have about 10 episodes in now. And uh, we had one guest so far, and it's been going very, very well. And we've been enjoying um, doing that. So, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.